you, you roll it. These two, these two rods are the same. They're made in about 19, this is made about 1956, 55, 6, 7, something like that. It's fiberglass. It's, it was a, made by a company called Fenwick. But the rod itself, the action was designed by a man named Jimmy Green, who was the greatest rod designer who ever lived. He also held the uh, world record distance casting from the late 1930s through the 40s and the 50s. I knew him. And these rods have no particular dollar value in today's world. I mean, they're worth 25 bucks, okay? They're the best rods for distance casting ever made. However, they are but ugly, as you can see, with all this nonsense and everything on them. And the real seats were not very good and so forth. So what I do is I have, I have an inventory of these rods because they do break and I'm tough on them when I go fishing. I don't fool around. I mean, I'm liable to break one every day. With, with this, which is um, uh, to me a more appropriate handle, an excellent reel seat. It's a Wright and McGill Granger reel seat. Um, and uh, probably the, one of the better reel seats ever, ever made. And everything's clean here. There's no reason to have all that junk. It's just linseed oil on here. Uh, simple thread wraps because unlike a lot of people, um, in today's world, people who don't fish very much don't wear stuff out. But uh, when I used to fish every day, all year, I'd wear out two or three sets of guides a year. So you have to be able to rewrap. You don't want a bunch of, of epoxy and thing on there that you can't get off and replace. So you have, you have one that's, to me, aesthetically nice and one that's not. And that's the story. I still to this day I'm going, should we really use that <laughs> I don't know if we should really use that. <laughs> but there is so much bullshit in the world um, and it, and you know, sadly, I mean, I keep thinking, what about, you know, some young kid like your son, yeah, or, or maybe maybe not that young, maybe older, and he and he, he's just trying to go fishing and fly fishing. Goes into this fly fishing store. And there's 29 kinds of fly lines, and well, how would he? How would the kid know? There's nobody there to tell him to give him the honest information. You know, when, you know, when I grew up, uh, I happened to be in San Francisco, which is the world headquarters of long distance fly casting. And there's a fly casting club there with pools that are as big as twice the size of a block in Livingston, all measured out with numbers and everything. And there's a the clubhouse and there's all, and all, all, every single world champion caster that ever lived came from there. And you go out there and you go, you're 12 years old and you go, what, do I, what am I supposed to do? And the guy who's the, the greatest caster who ever lived says, kid, you do this, this, and this, and you're done. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to endure any bullshit from then on out. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, so I go now, I went to, um, you know, when I went to Iceland last year, and I already held the record for the most salmon ever caught in Iceland in 300 years from 20 years ago, okay? So I went back last year and fished, with, fished for a week and, and broke that record. <laughs> and the, guy, the guy says, the guy goes, and the old Icelander, you know, that I fished with a guy and he said, he was like ready to retire, right? He says, uh, he says, where, he says, uh, asked me where I was from, and I said, I'm from Montana and everything. And he looked at this, and he goes, and he looked at what I was doing, and he said, 30, 30, 35, maybe 35 years ago, 40 years ago, two guys came here from San Francisco. They had what you have. <coughs> and he said, that's, that's the way to fish, you know. And, so, and so he watched me for, you know, and he said, he said, sir, he said, please may I try it? You know, I said, oh, shit, yeah, here. And I <laughs> it to him. You know, he knew exactly how to use it. He just 
first cast, he's got a salmon on, you know, and, you know, he just, you know, I caught, I landed 106 salmon in five and a half days. Holy I caught, crap. I landed 29 in one day. And when I came back into the lodge, there were all these years, there were no Americans there, with only Norwegians, um, Spanish guys, people from England and Scotland, and so the, the Norwegian guy, they were having a big celebration because this Norwegian guy was considered the best Atlantic salmon fisherman in Europe, caught six that day. <laughs> <laughs> he says, how many did you get? And I said, I, said I, I didn't really count them up, I said, but it's like 20 or 25 maybe. You know, the guy turned around and walked away because he figured I was lying. Right. You know, and they had invited me to have dinner with them and they uninvited me immediately. <laughs> but I think you know, just this lying American. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I always have to over outdo everybody else. And... But you know, that's the result of being an obsessive, compulsive individual from an early age. I know what the fuck I'm doing. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> That's not being overtly American. <laughs>